Hi, and welcome to the latest edition of our Seafood News Weekly video, brought to you by Erner Berry's Seafood Import Workshop. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Amanda Buckle. And I'm Nicole Christie. Let's start things off with the top seafood stories from around the globe. Kicking off our news today, the fresh halibut market is not being kind to Alaska this year. As of the last week of September, over 15 million pounds have been landed in the West Coast and Alaska. Canadian Atlantic fresh halibut imports are running a little ahead of last year and should total around 12 million pounds for the year. Halibut companies in Alaska say that the market is slow as buyers are reacting to an extended period of high prices. Thanks, Nicole. In other news, New Bedford fishing mogul Carlos Rafael was sentenced to 46 months in prison early this week for 26 Lacey Act violations of illegally misreporting fish to evade quota limits. Rafael was also sentenced to three years probation following his jail time and was barred from any participation in the seafood industry during that time. However, Judge William Young, who presided over the case, delayed his ruling in the forfeiture of Rafael's 13 vessels. Judge Young questioned the constitutionality of the forfeiture, citing the excessive fines clause in the Eighth Amendment. Thanks, Amanda. Meanwhile, Canadian seafood company Clearwater has seen their sales balloon by five times in the Chinese market thanks to the Tmall e-commerce platform. Statistics show that the Chinese online shoppers buy 83% of their fresh food from the Alibaba Tmall platform, which has been increasing its fresh food imports to maintain market status within the past few years. Clearwater's jump in sales numbers come shortly after the company announced that they had designed small boxes of Arctic surf clams specifically for Chinese consumers. Thanks, Nicole. In other news, Canada's Department of Fisheries and Oceans is taking action against Atlantic fishermen who are reportedly holding inshore fishing licenses as fronts for corporations. The DFO has contacted individuals who they believe are in controlling agreements and told them that their licenses may not be eligible for renewal. The department will not say how many licenses are at risk. Thanks, Amanda. In our final story of the day, we have an update on the price-fixing lawsuit against Bumblebee Foods, Starkist, and Chicken of the Sea. The three big U.S. tuna canners won procedural points to limit the scope of class action lawsuits against them. However, a judge largely upheld the suits, calling the defense motion to dismiss all claims as implausible. Claims that relied on laws in South Carolina, Illinois, and New York were dismissed, but claims in other states were upheld. Thanks, Nicole. That wraps up our show for today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. This video was sponsored by Erner Barry's Seafood Import Workshop, taking place on Tuesday, October 17th in Miami, Florida. The Seafood Import Workshop is an opportunity to hear from an expert panel on meeting new compliance requirements, USDA inspections on Pegasus, and much more. Register online by visiting shop.ernerberry.com or call 1-800-932-0617.